Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 28 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I am just getting on and it is dark outside. Makes me a little nervous. Now I've been doing a little bit of enchanting between last episode and this. You can see I've been putting some good, cool, awesome things in this book over here. Uh, that's where all the good things are going and all the, eh, not so, not so spiffy enchants can go over in this one. It's, uh, you know, so-so, not so great. But uh, yeah, doing my best to get some cool enchants. In fact, hmm, I think I have a repair in here. And it occurs to me that I'm constantly repairing this vial sword because, hey, it's got, you know, sharpness and it's got the soul stealer enchant, like the best soul stealer you can get. So let's see if we can enchant this guy with repair and what would be involved in that. Hmm. No, we can't. That's unfortunate. So I think you can only repair on uh, Thalmcraft items. So you can see we should be able to enchant the Thalmcraft sword with repair, but we can't enchant the Vile sword. Uh, that's unfortunate because I really wanted repair on that thing. Hmm. Oh well, we'll have to figure something out. One way or another though, you know, we'll see what we can do. We do have a couple... Oh boy, there's creepers. Good times. Soul shard for creepers. Hey, what you doing? I do have to get some better weapons on this primary weapon here, but, you know. I think I want to put sharpness on it of some sort, and we'll see what we can do. I might want to tweak this Sword of the Zephyr like I told you guys in the past. But for now, repair can go back. There might be a couple other things we want to put repair on. We'll see. Uh, this episode, there's probably a few things I'd like to get started working on. Yeah, I think uh, I think there's some stuff we got to get going. We still haven't seen this thing grow, and I'm wondering why that's the case. Uh, I would like to see this, you know, nifty little tree grow in this environment. We'll have to figure out why it's not. And, uh, you know, a couple other ideas that we have. Ha! You can't shoot me with an arrow. Nice. All right, I'll kill you just for trying. All right, guys. So what I will do is come back in just a few seconds and uh, see what we can't do. All right, back soon. All right, guys. I've got my crescent hammer out, and I'm running over to my thermionic fabricator to go ahead and give it a good uh, hit down there to start charging up the power inside. Why? Well, it's time to build something forestry like. Yep time to get ourselves something that's going to really help with some future production. It's a resource I'm currently low on and need a good amount. Unfortunately, it's going to require a good amount of resources to get going, but, uh, you know, it's going to be worth it in the end. So trust me when I tell you that this is going to be a useful machine. Uh, there's a couple things we need to start working on. So let's get some things together here. First off, I'm probably going to need a bit more redstone and a little bit of tin. Probably two tin and about a dozen more redstone. That ought to do. Now, uh, over here on my carpenter, I'm going to place in uh, some of the redstone and the tin to start letting this thing process some circuits. Uh, but there's no water in here. Did I never set up an infinite water source for this guy? Probably not. So let's look into doing that. I think I even have a way to do it real quick and easy now that it, you know, the thought occurs to me. How am I for liquidux? I have a few. Could probably use a little bit more. That'll do. Oh, Minium Stone, how I've missed you. Crafting in the palm of your hand. You can't go wrong. All right, straight down to here. Uh, the reason I think that this will be doable is, let's see, there's where I want to get the water to go. And if I remember correctly, we should have a nice infinite water source right around here somewhere. Yeah, we do. Nice. So uh, let's actually, you know, change this guy up. So I've got my uh, aqueous accumulator going. I'm going to go ahead and set him up like so, and that should allow the water to flow right in there. And then I'm going to run uh, some of this around the back. Let's say up to there. So we're going to have to dig into this wall a little bit. Eh, not too bad. I've had worse. All right, that'll do for now. So let's get this guy connected up and running. So I'm thinking just straight back here. And again, the main reason for this is we need a good supply of water, pretty much uh, at all times for this aqueous accumulator to, to keep filling up this guy. Perfect. That's what I like to see. So that should be a nice setup. Uh, we'll go ahead and seal this wall back up just so it's nice and fancy looking again. 
And then we just need to give this thing a good wrench. Because remember, a uh, liquid duct with liquid in it won't connect to a liquid duct without liquid in it unless you hit it with a wrench and say, hey, do what you're supposed to do. Cool. Perfect. Nice and inconspicuous. And I'll even cover this up with dirt the way it was before. Come on. There we go. Again, really love the minium stone. So cool. All right, now that we've got a steady supply of water going into our carpenter, we should no longer have to be concerned with getting that thing filled up. Yep, and we've got two basic circuit boards. Cool. Next up, we've got some liquid gas, glass because we let the thermionic fabricator get going here. I'm going to go ahead and get myself some golden electron tubes and some diamond electron tubes. A little expensive, five diamonds required, but you get four tubes, so, you know, at least that's pretty good. And uh, that should mostly be what we need. I'm going to go ahead and wrench that guy, let the power stop flowing through, and close up the hole in the floor that I made. At some point, I'll figure out a way to make that automatic. I don't even know. I'm sure there's probably some way. Um, just have to figure it out. Okay, now to get cooking on these awesome items. So, what do we want to make? Well, it's time to make an arboretum. Arboretums are a uh, farm in forestry that allow you to farm and harvest trees. So I'm actually going to need uh, a couple of blocks here. Yeah, it should do. So we're going to need two of these. And oh, wait, this is copper. I don't want copper. Bronze is what I want, but I'm low on it. So yeah, I guess I didn't want copper, huh? That's a good starting point. 15 of you and 5 of you. So yeah, tree farm time. But I already have a tree farm. Of course I already have a tree farm. Do I need more trees? No. Don't worry, I need something tree-like. You guys can probably guess what it is. But I'll leave you in suspense for a few minutes longer. Uh, to make these guys, we need to use the uh, diamond electron tubes and the gold electron tubes and a bit of glass. So I'm just going to prepare for the next recipe, and we need these basic circuit boards as well. We get the arboretum, which will plant our trees, and then we get this guy, the logger, which will chop down our trees. Nice and simple. Cool. Now, one more thing we're going to want to make, and this should be a huge hint as to what I'm going to be doing here, are four tree taps from Industrial Craft. Nice. Yeah, I'm definitely making a rubber tree farm, in case you haven't figured that out already. Uh, we're going to need another one of these sturdy casings, and uh, I want to say something like this. And the tree taps go around here. I might have reversed this, as usual. Oh, no, I didn't. Cool. So a tree tap is going to extract uh, resin from rubber trees and uh, also store it for us. So that should be a good starting point. We're probably going to want a redstone energy cell. Do I have one of those guys handy? I don't know that I do in here. I think I've already been using the ones that I've made previously, but that's not a big deal. Um, I have one ready to go grab. Let's sleep through the night and go pick it up. Okay, redstone energy cell time. I was charging it in my Billcraft charge station. Probably creepers out here are going to blow me up. Oh, look, my tree grew. Nice. Wondering when that would happen. Okay, there was a bad guy in there. Cool. But hey, here. Look. Fully, almost fully charged. Redstone energy cell. Full enough. And probably going to want some food. That's right, shoot each other. All right, let's set this tree up. I already picked out the spot that I want. Now this is a 13 by 13 area it's gonna clear. So if I put my uh, machine here, one, two, three, four, five, six is where it's gonna build out to. So that's uh, right next to my farm here. I might wanna bump it over one more. Um, so that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, and that'll leave one gap in the middle there. And I'm kind of lining it up in the middle. It should kind of look pretty nice. So right there is where I'm going to place uh, the Arboretum. Cool. So step one, Arboretum, ready to go. Now in this Arboretum, we're going to have to put, here we go, humus. Yes, look at that. I pronounced it right. Anybody who's seen my series in the past knows I like to pronounce it hummus, but uh, it's actually humus. And humus is the uh, stuff that you know, uh, 
trees grow on. So we're going to want to set up a nifty auto crafting humus system. Shouldn't be too bad to do. Let's go and, uh, you know, pop into our house here and see what's involved in making humus. All right, just need some dirt, which I should not be having any trouble with, and some fertilizer. Fertilizer over here. Okay, that's cool. We got plenty of dirt. Uh, how are we for fertilizer? Hmm. Well, fertilizer comes from appetite. I know that. And we're going to need a good amount of it. So let's figure it out. We can either get eight fertilizer by combining a little bit of appetite uh, with some sand, or we could get 16 if we combine it with ash. Oh, yeah, ash. I've had a bunch of that stuff, haven't I? Uh, yep, that stuff is going to be pretty useful. So let's grab it and uh, use it. All right, we're probably going to also want an automatic crafting table. So let's see, what do we got here in terms of sticks? Um, I'm thinking I want, you know, two automatic crafting tables. So let's make that happen. Okay, I think the first thing I want to do is just real quick set up a little something like this. I'm going to get 16 of you guys. Well, actually, no, it's going to be eight that goes in there, isn't it? That's perfect, though, because that'll give me uh, two stacks of this stuff, and then I can start surrounding it with dirt. So let me clean up my inventory, and I'll be ready to go in just a moment. All right, dirt around fertilizer will get us some humus. Cool. Nice, we got a lot of that stuff. That should be a good start. Now, like I said, we're going to want to automatically craft this stuff, but this will at least let us build the farm, and then once the farm's built, we can decide exactly how we want to lay things out. So uh, all we got to do is throw the humus right in here and give this guy some power. Go for it, buddy. Draining power is good, which means we're probably clearing out some terrain around the area here. Yeah, look at that. Nice. Uh, while I'm at this, I should probably help this little machine out. So let's grab our canvas bag, get our axe of the stream, and we'll let this thing go to town. Cool. I love this axe. It's so awesome. And maybe even these two trees over here, too. This place is just too overgrown anyway. Awesome. All right, clearing out some terrain. Looks like we've almost completely cleared this area out. I think it's ready to start planting things or what? Hey, yeah, there it goes. Nice. Excellent. We'll pick up all this junk around here. You know, don't want to leave a big mess around. All right, that worked for me. Now that we've got this thing planted, let's go get ourselves some rubber tree saplings. So in order for that to work, I think we've got some probably in our uh, wood plants, etc. Rubber tree saplings. Cool. Portable hole, most useful ever. Okay, plant me some saplings, would you? They go in this slot, of course, and they'll just get planted right there nice and perfectly. Cool. Beautiful. All right, let's get this uh, thing off of here, because obviously we're not going to use a redstone energy cell to charge this permanently. Uh, we're going to use some peat engine stuff, so that should be all right. All right, I will come back when I'm ready to start with the auto crafting of things. But let's see. First, we're probably going to want to put here will be our logger. Um, here will be our, you know, tree tap. And, uh, yeah, we'll figure it out from there. Shouldn't be too bad. All right, back in a moment. So, what am I doing over here at this here village? Hmm, well, uh, there's something I want to use in my crafting recipes, and uh, I'm going to need to find it around here somewhere. So what do we got? Awesome good stuff? Hey, there's some villagers. Cool. What do you got in here, buddy? Uh, you want some books. I want to get some emeralds, so uh, books shouldn't be too hard to get my hands on, considering I have a reed farm and... Uh, you know, some other good stuff. What do you want over here, buddy? Uh, you trade for those knowledge fragments are really useful for uh, Thalmcraft, by the way. We'll definitely want to get our hands on some of those. Cooked fish, that's a terrible trade. I do not want to do that. Hey, we have a beekeeper villager here, too. That's awesome. Come here, you. Oh, yeah, proven frames. Those are really nice for uh, beekeeping, which we will definitely be getting to. You know, it's weird. Some people don't like beekeeping. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way I do it. 
but I do get complaints every now and then when I do beekeeping videos, but I'm going to try and keep it interesting and do it a little different. All right, so books is probably the best thing to bring around here. Okay, how about I head back home, get some books, and then come back. Yeah, books for emeralds. I guess that's not a terrible trade. Definitely need a few emeralds at least. Yeah, no other good trades here. Okay, I'll be back in a few. I should do some kind of villager breeding this season. Quick stop by my cow farm later, and I've got some leather. And i uh, also have some paper. Get myself just a few books. Should be enough for now. Well, that was a long trip, but I brought uh, 33 books here, and I'll get myself three emeralds. Way more than I wanted to, you know, trade for. Um, I actually would have liked a few more emeralds, but 11 books, that's pretty expensive, actually, uh, per emerald. Oh ah, well. We'll have to see if we can find either a better village or maybe even get some villager breeding going on at some point to find a better source of emeralds. But for now, I've got enough. Just enough, but enough. All right, this should be a good enough start to figure out how I want to put together this crazy contraption of auto tree farming and awesomeness. All right, let's go ahead and put down a couple things first. We've already made a bit of a mess by growing these trees, but that's okay. It'll all come together. So first, like I said, right next to this guy, we're going to put down our logger. Now, we're not going to hook up any power to these guys yet, but I'm actually just kind of first building out the design for the auto system. So uh, next to that, we're going to put the tree tap. Now, the way the tree tap works is it's going to extract the resin from the trees, but it doesn't actually do anything but extract it. Um, the, uh, the, the logger itself is actually what extracts the resin, so keep that in mind, because that's going to be important uh, in just a bit. All right, so now we've got that going. Let's set up an automatic hummus production here. Humus. Sorry, I said it right the first time. That's all you get from me. All right, automatic humus production uh, right here. Shouldn't be too bad. Uh, in this little table, we're going to say appetite... And we're going to need a little bit more ash, because I think I used the stack that I had, and that's uh, going to be needed here. So let's see. Do we have any ash? We do. Excellent. Cool. So the way this is going to work is um, we're probably going to wind up just saying ash all the way around here. And we'll do our best to get ash going. If we have to go with a sand approach at some point, we can. Um, it's going to you know, be a little bit wasteful with regards to the appetite, and I think we'll be producing enough ash for this. Cool. Now remember, auto crafting tables pull from an adjacent inventory, so by throwing the ash and the appetite in there, it's going to go ahead and start working. All we got to do is get this guy cooking up like this. Cool. So down here, we can just set up a wooden pipe. And connect him up to, uh, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, diamond, cobblestone, whatever. Gold. Not diamond. We wouldn't want to use diamond for that. Okay. And then, um, yeah, we're good otherwise. Cool. So I just need uh, some gates. I think I'm going to need at least, hmm, at least a couple gates. Yeah. Let me get one or two gates going, and I'll be back. All right, I set the logic gate creation uh, system in process. That shouldn't be too bad. Want to get some pistons, some copper gears. Time to make a few more of those uh, peat-fired engines. Cool. They're going to, of course, be used to power the three machines out there. We're also going to want to grab a bit of peat to make sure that things run smoothly for a while. So uh, might need to tap into here. We've got plenty of blaze rods feeding that farm for now anyway. Okay. Pete goes into the system. I'm just waiting for my, uh, you know, stuff to start building over there, the uh, logic gates. So down here somewhere, probably around here. That'll do. We're going to want the peat fired engine set up. One, two, and three. Cool. We got our crescent hammer to rotate this guy. And Pete goes in the engines. One, two... Yeah, peat engines have an entire bounding box, so you need to, you know, get to them. Now, uh, you can pump the ash out of the bottom of these engines, and I think that's what I'm going to probably wind up doing. And I'll send it all straight into this chest. So uh, we'll probably, in fact, want this to be an iron pipe, because we're going to have a uh, connection going in here that just says, like, everything go up into the pipe in that way. Cool. Because eventually we'll have uh, ash getting pumped across, probably straight from under here. We're probably going to need a few gates, but don't worry. We'll get it all sorted out. Cool. Let's see how the logic gate creation process is going. But um, before we do that, I'm just going to get... Um, probably just throw some dirt in there. Leave a little bit in my inventory for now. Uh, we'll need eight of you. And one of you. 
teach this auto crafting table about the compost. The humus, I mean, yeah, not compost. All right, how's the uh, crafting of stuff going over here, guys? Definitely still running. All right, making progress. Should have uh, a couple iron and gates. One of those is going to have to be uh, upgraded, so we'll manage to make that happen. And uh, while we're at this, I'm probably going to want a few other things to happen. Just FYI, because I'm getting impatient waiting for all these lasers to finish, upgrading my laser system a little bit. Remember, I always said I was going to have a uh, fifth one here, right? All right. That is not what I meant to do, but okay, I don't know how that happened. That was weird. All cleaned up. Uh, let's go ahead and just connect up a little bit of power here, like so. And then one, two, three. Excellent. Just increase the speed of this production by 50%. Awesome. All right, stage one of setting this up. Let's go down here and get this stuff all connected. So, uh, like I said, we're going to auto archic the auto crafting table. For that, we're just going to need a simple autarkic gate. Um, but we'll set that up in a minute. Over here is where we're going to actually set up the um, stuff coming out. So let's say that we put down the following. You here, leading to you and you. Cool. So pumping in the humus. And we're going to want a uh, artokic, kind of like we set up over there. So we want a normal iron here and some red piping wire. And the autarkic there. And this guy is going to say, when you're low on resources, specifically humus, Soil, less than 25%, red pipe signal. And over here, red pipe signal equals energy pulse. Okay, so all we gotta do is take the humus out to test this. And what we should start seeing that uh, we're getting the red pipe signal is on and it starts producing humus. Look at that, perfect, exactly what I wanted to see. And when we have enough humus in there, it turns off and it's no longer activating and no longer running, perfect. Now let's go see if our other autarkic is ready. I have to get out of this uh, maze of trees that I have, but don't worry, they won't be my problem much longer. Other autarkic, are you ready? Nope, not yet. There we go, finish that up nice and quick. Autarkic is ready to go. I'm probably saying that wrong too, knowing me, but oh, night time. Better go uh, sleep through this night. This one's going to basically always be running, so we're going to say, uh, you know, redstone signal off energy pulse. That way it'll constantly pull out, so any appetite and ash that we put in there will instantly be turned to fertilizer, but this one will only run when it's needed. Cool? Looks like a plan is working. Let's get these guys running now. Um, so, all we need to do is set up a way for items to get pumped out of this system. Uh, so this is cobblestone structure pipe, right? Let's go ahead and get some smooth stone piping, and for that we're going to need a little bit of smooth stone. Didn't realize we're going to have pipes that close, but like I told you guys in the past, when you have a uh, cobblestone and smooth stone next to each other, they won't connect. So that's a good way to ensure that your uh, pipes don't interact with each other when you don't want them to. So we just need some smooth stone piping. There we go. The only other difference between smooth and cobble is when items are uh, zipping along through the line at uh, increased speed because of golden. Uh, smooth stone, the um, slowdown of items is uh, a little bit less than with normal um, you know, cobblestone pipes. So there we go. Those pipes are not connecting to each other, which is exactly what we want. Um, from here, we want uh, everything that comes out of here to go to the right. So we're probably going to want this guy set up like that and here. So this way items come out and we're going to put them in a chest here, but not just any chest. We're probably going to want an ender chest and uh, we're going to make the colors on that white, white, white because this ender chest is going to make its way down to our main line. And there we go. Ender chest is ready. Excellent. I'm going to put away this other junk that I collected and we're ready to go put this thing down. So. I think our tree farm is ready to be turned on, except for one component that we haven't set up yet. Um, and that one component is making sure my sorting system can handle rubber and rubber wood. Uh, at this point, it cannot. So we're going to want to make sure that can happen. So let's get this thing all sorted. All right, so what's going to happen is items will get sent out of the top and side of um, this guy, the logger, and they're all going to filter their way down and into the ender chest, which will then sort the items for us automatically back at our sorting machine room. Cool. This guy is set up to automatically produce the humus we need. We haven't started automatically pumping out the um, ash into the chest, but that shouldn't be too hard to get going. But for now, it's time to build a couple more extractors. 
Now I like to do this with two extractors. Um, you can see that we got one there. I'm gonna need a second, so let's go ahead and get just a bit more wood for this. And there we go. Extractors on the sides again, the tree taps. Two extractors is definitely going to be required, and we're probably going to want a few more overclockers as well if we can manage, um, just because uh, we're going to get a lot of wood and resin coming out of this, like a real lot. Um, surprisingly large amount, to be uh, honest with you guys. You'll be uh, shocked to see how much we get. So where do I want to lay this out? All right, let's see what kind of trouble we can make. I think I've come up with where I want to put these things. Uh, actually, it's going to be right here. Uh, so if I put down my extractors here and here, because of that glass cover there, it won't allow the uh, the uh, pneumatic tubes to you know put stuff in. Let's actually turn this guy off for a moment. So we're going to stop items from flowing through the system while we make changes to it. Uh, I'm going to use hoppers again. Uh, remember, I've been using the hoppers here, and there. I actually replaced the uh, relays on top of the recyclers with hoppers. Um, just, you know, a little bit cheaper of an option. Um, we're also going to have some pneumatic tubes going across the top here, and I've got a screwdriver ready to rotate this guy, uh, face him upwards, so that the pneumatic tubes can go up like that. Cool? So it'll still work the same way it was. Um, we just uh, actually don't need this here anymore, so let's clear it out. Good. Get out of there, and uh, yeah, of course I don't have any smooth stone on me, but for now this will do. To do, replace that. Okay, so that should work to pull uh, out of the extractor. Next, of course, we need to get a little bit of power connected in here. Shouldn't be too hard to do. So what we'll probably want to do is... Let's do it this way. That should work, right? Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem at all. So uh, these guys should be getting power at this point. Excellent. Finally, we need to get some pneumatic tubes uh, connected up here. So what I'm going to do is make this the cyan line. And we'll connect these directly in here. And of course, in order for stuff to get up here, it has to be marked with the cyan color. Let's get that set up in this guy. We're probably going to want to replace this. Um, we'll make this the cyan color wherever that is. I think it was that. Yeah, they look like they match. And then over here, we'll make a uh, dark green path for the plants and stuff that go through the system in the event that we ever have uh, wood or anything else fancy like wheat and saplings going through here. Cool. All right. Should be good. And that should be all we need, I think, right? I think so. Somehow I got scrap in my inventory. No biggie, though. All right, so that should pull through, and it should color the... Um, the rubber that comes out of the extractor, the same color as everything else. Now I just want a couple of overclocker upgrades. Let me go make them off camera. All right, a little bit of project table work later. Got myself some overclocker upgrades. Now all we really need to do is tell this thing exactly uh, what items can go through here. But for now, overclockers and the extractors, three each should do. I uh, don't think we need much more than that. Okay, let's go get ourselves some rubber wood and uh, some resin. Shouldn't be hard. I should be able to just make myself a quick tree tap to get myself a piece of resin, and uh, we'll even chop down a tree with uh, you know our hands if we need to. Rubber wood and resin. Let's see. Do we have any around here? We do. Cool. All right. So right in here, we're gonna put rubber wood and sticky resin. And we can even put some in here just to watch everything smoothly go through. There we go. So we should see the resin go up here and get painted kind of like the teal color. Oh wait, derpy derp. Little mistake on my part, need to get a red power 2 item real quick. And this can be fixed. Anybody care to guess what I messed up? Come on, you can figure it out. Right here. I 
We do not want items going into there. That would not be cool. All right, everybody stop. I don't want this stuff running anymore. Oh yeah, look at the mess we're making. Why are you going into the output slot of the extractor? That's not where you belong. Oh well, I'll fix it. So what happened is, um, because the pneumatic tube was connected to the side of the retriever, anything that was getting, uh, that, that became a valid inventory. So I'm just gonna, you know, get this guy off of here and, uh, you know, run everything through again. So let's see. We should wind up with a pretty solid system now. Go ahead and run. Let this stuff go through where it actually belongs. Should be nice. Cool. And everything should be running smoothly once more. And once it does actually get to the resin, there we go, should go up to the cyan up top somewhere. There it is. Perfect. And that's the only thing that goes up in there. And then it starts extracting. And the extractor will run pretty quickly, hopefully keeping up with the tree farm. You know, worst case, throw a few more overclockers in there. All right, let's go get the tree farm turned on, and we'll see how it does. Then we got to wrap up, because I'm pretty sure we're getting to that wrapping up point. So, outside we go. Let's get the tree farm running. Now, like I said, um, the extractor here we're going to turn on. And uh, we'll probably just want to set these guys up with some kind of redstone torch or a lever or something. Lever levers will do. I've never actually tested, but, oh cool. You can actually put levers on the bottom of these things. That's nice. Cool upgrade. All right, so now they should be running. And the uh, the tree tap here will start pumping resin out. And the logger here will start pumping out the wood and taking care of everything. And then we're gonna start replanting. Nice, I think we have a successful rubber tree farm. Let's see how the uh, resin extractor thing does. It should pull some resin out. There it goes, it got it. And that resin should then come out the top of this guy, I believe. Pretty sure it's the top that it comes out of. Cool, something's happening. Hey, yeah, look, rubber wood showed up in there, perfect. And look, there's the resin coming from the top, awesome. Uh, leaves and saplings and stuff will also come out the top of the logger. See, look, there's the resin. Nice. So the tree tap pumping out the resin, the logger picking it up along with the wood and the, um, you know, rubber wood saplings. Beautiful. We've got an automated rubber tree farm, guys. Uh, at some point, like I said, we'll probably want to start pulling the ash that gets created in the peat-fired engines out um, and automatically turning that into the fertilizer that we're going to want. But for now, I think we have uh, actually quite a bit of fertilizer. We could probably do with a little bit more dirt, though, so why don't I go get a few stacks of dirt. And uh, for now, I think it's time to wrap up episode 28. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, plenty of rubber coming in now, and that's going to be very helpful for us because we're going to need a good amount of that stuff for some of the industrial craft machines and tools and fun things we're going to want to build in the near future. That tree is probably going to annoy you guys just as much as it will me. So uh, there we go. Some more uh, dirt, at least for now. Uh, let's just chop this thing down completely. You know what, guys? I just realized a little bit of a flaw with the system, too. Um, yeah, I need to fix this before we wrap up. The... Um, items here are not going to flow, uh, the, the saplings are going to flow out into the chest and get sorted uh, instead of going back into the arboretum. So we're going to want this to, uh, you know, kind of go back in here. So let's figure out how that can happen. Uh, what I'm thinking is, put up a diamond pipe here, okay, and we're going to just say uh, on the diamond pipe, uh, we're going to have a connection to this guy, and we'll say the yellow side is where rubber tree saplings go. So when saplings come down, uh, if it's a rubber tree, it's gonna go that way. Now, uh, that guy's also gonna be pumping out sand, so we don't want anything really going back up the white line. So let's get that fixed by uh, just saying cobble goes white. So any cobble that comes through the system will go up, but there won't be any of that. Uh, so the sand will also get sorted back into the uh, sorting system. Cool, that'll actually be nice. So we've got uh, the rubber tree saplings coming through, going that way. Now any excess saplings, so say we overflow our arboretum, will actually um, you know, kind of spill out onto the ground here. So that might be a little bit of a problem. We'll have to deal with that. Um, probably say, maybe I want to throw them into this chest. Might not be a bad idea. I don't know, something like that. 
Yeah, maybe I'll do the chest. That doesn't sound like a terribly bad idea. What I could do is just use another pipe here. Uh, we can just steal one of these rubber tree saplings. Just say, uh, yeah, that shouldn't be too bad. We'll say, here's a diamond, and we'll have the connector to here. And we'll say, um, blue is the path that we want rubber wood saplings to go. And we'll say, sand can go green. Okay. And yellow, uh, we'll probably just leave blank. So what's going to happen is sand will get pulled out and head down the green path. And then sand will also go down this green path. Uh, the rubberwood saplings are going to try to go down the blue path and make its way into the arboretum. That's going to be their first destination. But the yellow is kind of an alternate so that if the arboretum is full, the uh, saplings will head down the yellow path because we didn't put anything in yellow. If we put something here, it wouldn't let the rubber tree saplings go. But for now, should be all right. So, hey, that's a nice solution. Cool. Rubber tree sapling sorted, and that means it's a good wrapping up point. So I hope you guys enjoyed episode 28. This is Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.